Good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. Randomly found a package of fiber gummies in my kitchen yesterday. Fiber gummies are like little fiber gummy chewy things that you give your kids if they're not getting enough fiber. And I was like, oh, I wonder what these taste like. So I ate the package of fiber gummies. Woke up this morning like this. Okay, if you're wondering if fiber gummies have enough fiber to get a 133 pound woman out of bed at 5.48 a.m., they do. So just wanted to let you all know that. Anybody trying to work in more fiber, get yourself some fiber gummies. Holy bajolies. And to think I was giving those things to my kids. Yikes. Anyway, I'm about 10 pounds lighter this morning. Oh, that was hot. I laughed and burned myself at the same time. Um, so I wanted to tell you guys a story that happened at the ice skating rink this weekend because I'm still smiling about it and the mother was so wonderful. So we were at a birthday party at an ice skating rink and uh, ace, 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 ace. Look at this lump. Look at this lump. Hi, Bubba. Oh, I love you. Okay, so we're at the ice skating rink, and there was a girl, I think she was maybe 13 or 14, um, beautiful girl wearing ice skates. Now, the entrance to the rink is just a small door. It's glass all around, and then there's a small door, so they don't really want people standing in the door because then people can't get on and off the rink, and this girl was standing in the door and clearly terrified. To enter and um, oh God bless you um, and I didn't it didn't take me long to hear that she was autistic the repetition um, I could and her mother was so good with her I wish I had a camera because this mom and of course, I'm so lucky. I strike up a conversation with this mom and she watches Coffee Talk. And I think, what are the chances? That I'm in awe of this woman. I'm watching her with her daughter and she's so patient and so good and has such a good sense of humor because life sometimes will try to cripple you. It will actually try to take you down. There are days, like I had yesterday, where... You will fall into bed and go, I think I survived that by the grace of God. I, I literally was hanging on by a thread. I don't know how I made it through. And this woman had such an unbelievable sense of humor and the most gorgeous smile. So I'm talking to her about her daughter. She's adopted. We found out she was autistic at about two and a half. She's telling me all about it. And her daughter, Leah, is talking to me. Leah. Are you having a good time? I don't want to go out there. You don't have to. You do not have to. She's standing in the doorway. She won't come out of the doorway. Occasionally she'll come out of the doorway, but then like kind of feel like she wants to challenge herself again and go back to the doorway to get close to the ice and see the skaters, but she does not want to get on the ice. So we were all just making small talk, whatever. And my kids were out on the ice skating. So I leave, we say our goodbyes, and I'm standing in, I'm like with Michael in the watching area, like where you watch your kids. And I see Charlie on her little ice skates come around and go to the door where Leah is wedged in the door. And I notice that Charlie immediately starts talking to her. And I see Charlie like, I have a video of it. I see her like talking to her and then she kind of skates around and then comes back and is talking to her some more and then does a little skating. Turns out, Charlie was talking to her and Leah conveyed that she was scared. She didn't want to go out there. And Charlie was trying to show her, look, I'll skate with you. Look, I can do it. Come on. Come skate with me. And 
I went back and saw Leah's mom and it was just such a special moment for the two of us. Like, that is Charlie for as crazy as she can make me. And as difficult and trying as she can be, she is the kid who sees another kid apprehensive or afraid and thinks, I can, let me get right in there. Let me show you how it can be done and I will help you. Come on. And I feel like so many of us have that when we're young and then we become numb or stifled because life knocks us down or someone breaks our heart or a friend betrays us and we stop, we fight the instinct to want to reach out and help others because we don't want to be rejected. We don't want to feel weird or we don't want to be hurt. And we are truly created to be those people, to extend the hand and say, the hand, apparently I'm British or from 19, 1800s. I'm going to extend the hand. Um, to extend the hand and, and try to help people. You know, it's like life is hard for all of us. There are some days we will fall into bed and go, I le like I legit don't know how I made it through that day. Uh, it was, mm -mm. my life is mad at me. My life is trying to hurt me <laughs> because it took everything I had to get through that day. We all have days like that. We all get our hearts broken. We all extend ourselves to people who will take advantage of us and use us. This is a thing. This is actually a thing. It happens to all of us. But we can't allow that to stop us from extending a hand the next time somebody needs it. It is truly why we were created. It is our test every day to go to see somebody in need and go, what can I offer? Even if just the hand, right? Right. I know personally that I have been slighted in my life in different areas of my life and it has been made me gun shy to reach out. But 9.9 .9 times out of 10, when you reach out to somebody who needs it, they will take it. And it will make you feel wonderful because it is when you are fulfilling your true calling. The human connection is exactly why we were created. So when you are in that lane, it is the smoothest ride. It is when we get far away from helping each other that life feels so difficult. It is hump day, folks. We are almost there. I love you so much today. Have a great day.